Welcome YouTubers to another episode of my Grammar Hero series. Uh, in this video, I will discuss the applied mathematics section of the test of adult basic education, that is the Tate test. Um, in particular, I am going to work out 50 problems. Um, if you haven't taken the Tate before, it is a test that's given in two versions. You can either take a complete battery or a survey. Um, the complete battery, as you can see, uh, has 195 questions, whereas the survey has 100 test questions. Um, more often than not, you will be given the survey, um, and it, it its levels vary um, from A to D, I believe, but don't quote me on that. And typically, you'll be given the most difficult version. Okay. Um, so that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for the applied mathematics section, you may use a calculator. And as you can see, I already have a calculator on the screen. Uh, whenever possible, I am going to do problems using the calculator, okay? Um, so if you're uncomfortable with a calculator, now's your time to watch what I do and, and follow those steps when, it, when it's test day for you, okay? So number one, what is the product of 306 and 15? Uh, to do this one, you have to understand that product means multiplication. And um, so we're just gonna do that one in the calculator. In my math computation video, I would actually work this out by hand, but since we're allowed to use the calculator and we only get 55 minutes for 50 questions, um, I'm just gonna plug it in the calculator and move on. So. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Three o. Click the calculator. Three o six times fifteen. Four thousand five hundred and ninety. Okay. So B. What is twelve thousand five hundred and thirty six rounded to the nearest thousand? Um. So to do this one, you have to understand what each number represents in this number. So let me go ahead and write that up here because I think you'll benefit from this in the long run. Um, so the six and 12,536 is units, or ones. The three is tens. The five is in the hundreds place. The 12 is in the thousands place. And the one is in the ten thousands place. So for this question, it asks us to round to the nearest thousand. So we're gonna be looking at the two right here because that's in the thousands place. And if you recall, when we round, we look at the number to the right of it. So in this case, we're gonna look at the five and decide how we round this, okay? Just as a rule, if it's less than five, um, you round down. If it's greater, if it's five itself or greater, you round up, okay? So as you can see here, we have 12,005. So this five is gonna kick this um, 12 up to three. So it's just gonna be 13,000. B, okay. Um, so now we have the number 45,782 and we're asked what the five in this number represents. Um, again, if you look up here, we have units, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands. So the same applies here. The two is in the units place, the eight is in the tens place, the seven is in the hundreds place, the five is in the thousands place. So C, thousands. Okay. Four, Sue is selling tickets. One day she sold 86 tickets and 135, 135 another. Uh, what is the total number of tickets she sold? So this is gonna be an addition problem. In particular, we're gonna add 135 
plus 36. And as I said, um, I'm not going to do that, work that out by hand. Uh, I'm just going to do 135 plus 36, 171. I mean 86, sorry about that. So 135 plus 86, which gives you 221, okay? This is a good question that you'll probably see. Um, a bus holds 50 passengers. How many buses are needed to carry 270 students on the field trip? So um, if you can't do the mental math on that one, on this one, that's fine. Um, go ahead and make a little chart. I'll make this my bus, my bus, uh, my number of buses. So one bus, two bus, three bus, four bus, five buses, six buses. This is going to be the amount of the number. Okay. Um, so let's just add them up. One bus holds 50. Uh, Another bus holds 50, so we add 50 to 50. That gives us 100. Uh, third bus will hold 50 plus 100, uh, so 150. We're going to add another 50 to this to get the n amount of people four buses holds, 200. Uh, add another 50, 250, and add another 100, 300. So as you can see, each bus holds uh, 50 more people or the number as you increase the number of buses, the number of people that you can take goes up by 50. Now the question asks um, how many buses are needed to carry 270 people? If you were to say five, you could only take 250 people, which means you'd leave 30 people at the school. Um, so you need a minimum of six buses and you'll have 30 empty seats. Uh, throughout those buses. Okay, so the answer is D. Um, write the number choice for the number 156,032. Okay, so 156,032. Okay, um, this would be 100,000. 10,000, thousand, hundreds, tens, ones. Um, so we have 156,000. We have no hundreds and 32. Be careful because they put 23 there just to see if you're reading the question. In a shipment of 11,268 eggs, 1,319 were broken. How many eggs were not broken? This is a subtraction problem. Okay. How many eggs were not broken? Well, we're going to take 11,268 and subtract that from 1,319. And as I said, I'm not going to work these out by hand. So 11,268 minus 1319. So 9,949. Okay. Uh, you may have noticed that to be successful on this section of the test, you have to recognize what the question is asking. Is it asking you to multiply, to subtract, to divide something, and then be able to, you know, use the calculator to carry out that operation? Okay. Number eight, an airplane traveled 1,824 miles in three hours. What was the average speed in hours? Um, so this one's simple. This is asking division. And they gave us its distance traveled in three hours. So to get the miles per hour, we're going to take 1,824 divided by three. And this will give us our rate per hour. So 18, oops, 
I'm going to click onto the calculator. 18.24 divided by 3, that would be an average of 608 miles per hour. Again, you got to be able to recognize what they want you to do. Number nine, uh, Rosa came to school with 18 pencils. She lost eight of them. Then she was given 10, and then she gave six to friends. So whenever I'm given problems like this, I just work it out one step at a time. So Rosa came to school with 18. She lost eight. So that's subtraction. 18 minus eight, that's 10. Okay. She was given 10 more, so that's addition. That gets us to 20. And then she gave 6 away to friends, so 20 minus 6, that's 14. Okay? So at the end of the day, uh, Rosa had 14 pencils left. Equivalence in fractions. This tests your ability to reduce fractions. Um, and let me go ahead and move my calculator to the other side while I'm thinking about it. So there's a very simple way to do this since you have a calculator um, and you'll always get it right. I will show you that way. If you want to know how to reduce these by hand, please go to my uh, video for the math computation section of this um, uh, test. Uh, so the easiest way to do these problems uh, is simply to divide. 3 over 4, 9 over 12, and see if you get the same decimal. Because what does 3 over 4 say? This, in reality, says, what is 3 divided by 4? Okay? And that's going to give you some decimal. Um, so, watch. 3, let me do, I'm going to need my pen back. So what I'm going to do is 3 over 4 equals some decimal, 9 over 12 equals some decimal. Let's use our calculator. 3 divided by 4, that's 0.75. 9 divided by 12, that's 0.75. As you can see, the decimals are the same, so these are equivalent. Just to be safe, let's try another one. Uh, 4 divided by 8, that's 0.5. 1 divided by 4, that's 0.25, not equivalent. Okay. 4 divided by 8, we said is 0.5. 20 divided by 36, 0.555, not equivalent. Okay. So use your calculator wisely. Uh, Miss Smith bought a half a pound of apples, uh, three quarter pound of grapes, and one third of a pound of lemons. How much fruit did she buy? So this is asking us to add the fractions and in this case, I am going to work it out by hand, but if you need additional practice, see my math computation video. Um, we have to find uh, the greatest factor of 2, 4, and 3. That turns out to be 12. Okay, now we ask ourselves, what times 2 will get us to 12? Well, 6 times 2 will. What we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So that's 1 times 6, which is 6. What times 4 will get us to 12? That's going to be 3. So we're, what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. What times 3 will get us to 12? That's going to be 4. So what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. 4. Now we simply add a cross, and I can represent this at, like this if it's easier. 6 plus 9 plus 4 all over 12. I can only do that because they all have the same denominator, denominator or bases. So let's go ahead and do that. 6 times 9 is 15 plus 4 is 19. 
Okay, and again, this is the same as um, 19 divided by 12. How many times does 12 go into 19? One, subtract 12. 19 minus 12 is seven. So that's our remainder. And we take our remainder and put it over this. So it becomes one and seven over 12, 12, okay? And that is our answer, C. Again, more fractions, um, but before I do that one, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this work. So just bear with me. Okay, so it says Bill, number 12 says, Bill spent two thirds of an hour swimming and five sixths of an hour jogging. How much longer did he spend jogging than swimming? So again, we want subtraction. We want five over six minus two over three. Now don't think you're gonna have a calculator that's gonna be able to do this because you're not gonna be allowed to use that calculator. So when we're adding or subtracting fractions, to do that, we need to make sure the bases are the same. What do three and six have in common? Six, so let's go ahead and put these both over six. This one's already over six. What times three will get us to six times two? What we do to the top, we do to the bottom. So two times two is four. Now we simply have five minus four, which is one over six. And that is our answer. Okay. Sequences. The key to sequences is finding something that works for at least two of these. Um, so to get from 312 to 315, we had to add three. To get to from 315 to 318, we had to add three. And to get from 324 to 327, we had to add three. So for this sequence, we're adding three to each previous number. So 318 plus three is going to be 321. And these are not gonna be hard. They're not gonna try to stump you with some geometric sequences from calculus two. It's gonna be very basic arithmetic, plus minus, and that's it. Um, arrange these in order from greatest to least. Uh, and you can see we have decimals. Please do not get uh, frightened by decimals because you already know how to use them. Let's convert these to money because we're all pretty good with money. Three dollars and forty-five cents. Four dollars and five cents. Okay, four dollars and fifty-four cents. Okay, uh, three dollars and two cents, and twenty-three dollars. Right away, we can see twenty-three dollars is the greatest. So this is going to be at the very end. What's the smallest number? Um, I hope you can decide this because if someone were to say, "Do you want three dollars or twenty-three dollars?" you would definitely say twenty-three dollars. So three o two, three dollars and two cents is the smallest. 23 is the greatest. Look at A, they put 23 first. That's greatest to least, not least to greatest. Okay, so we wanna look for 302 in the first position and 23 in the last position. Okay, 302 first. Again, this one has 23 first, so we don't want it. 23 first, you're left with 302 right there, C. Okay, and sometimes that's all you have to do. You don't have to spend time arranging these whole things. Uh, if you notice that this is the smallest, this is the biggest, and you look at your answer choices and everything's, and, and it's that obvious, just go ahead and do it. Which of these is true? Again, we're using decimals, so convert them to money if you need to. $3.45 and point, or $3.45 and basically half a cent. 
uh, are three dollars and eighty two um, this one is true three dollars and forty five cents is less than three dollars and eighty two uh, six dollars and thirty two is greater than seven dollars and twenty cents now twelve dollars and nine cents is greater than twenty dollars now um, dollar oh eight is less than a dollar and almost a penny no okay so number 16 mr jones spent 34 dollars and 50 cents on dinner and left a 50 percent tip how much money did he spend in the restaurant altogether so in this case to do it this one correctly we're going to do bill plus tip equals total and this total will be our answer okay so the bill it turns out was 3450 he left a 15 percent tip so we're going to take this 3450 and multiply it by 0.15 so 15 percent is the same as 0.15 so 34.50 times 0.15 that's going to be 571 so we'll add 5 dot 517 and a half sorry about that and then add them together so 34.50 plus five dollars seventeen cents and a half so we got 39.68 and you can see that they just rounded this up to 68 okay again In our money system, there's no way to pay someone uh, half a penny. So what they did is they took the penny and rounded it up to 0.68. Okay. 17. A baseball team only won 20% of its game of the games it played. If it played 25 games, how many games did it win? So in other words, how many games out of 25? equals 0.2 and again 0.2 represents 20 percent those are equivalent now we just do a few operations um, to get rid of this 25 we multiply both sides by 25 that goes away we're left with x equals 0.2 times 25 x equals 5 so they won a total of five games now what you could have done is you could have taken every single one of these numbers put it over 20 and see which one or over 25 and see which one equals 0.2 so 12 divided by 25 0.48 it's not 20 percent 8 divided by 25 that's 0.32 that's not 20 percent 9 divided by 25 that's 0.36 5 divided by 25 0.2 exactly what we're looking for okay uh, Miss Brown bought a video cassette recorder for $450. She made a down payment of $50 and agreed to pay the balance in monthly installments of $40. How much? How many monthly payments did she make? So, the cassette costs $450, and right away she paid $50. Okay. So this is at the time she's buying it. So $450 minus $50. It's just 400 and she's paying 40 bucks a month so this becomes 400 
divided by 40 to get the number of months. Okay. 10 months. So to do this one correctly, you had to realize that you gave $50 right away. This did not count toward a month. Then you had a division problem, $40 a month. She has $400 left to pay. Divide it to get the number of months. 19, uh, on a hike, Mike walked five miles in two hours. At this rate, how far will he walk in seven hours? Um, so the best thing to do is to convert this to miles per hour. And to do that, you take five divided by two. That's going to give you, oops. So in other words, he's walking 2.5 miles per hour. So every hour he walks two and a half miles. So again, remember the bus question, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, one hour, he does 2.5. And we're just gonna add 2.5 to this. 2 plus 2.5 becomes 5, plus 2.5, 5 plus 2.5, that's 7.5, add 2.5 to 7.5, that's 10, 12.5, 12.5, Seventeen point five. So again, after an hour, he walks two point five miles. Uh, after two hours, he walks five miles. After three hours, he walks seven point five miles. And after seven hours, he walks seventeen point five miles. Okay. Now you could have taken um, this two point five, multiplied it by seven, and immediately you got the seventeen point five as well. If you had to see it this way, it's fine. Um, but you did have to convert from the number of miles he walks in two hours to the unit rate of the number of miles he walks in one hour and then do multiplication. Okay, on a map, one centimeter represents 10 kilometers. If two cities are 1.5 centimeters apart on a map, what is the actual distance in kilometers? Um, so this one's easy. Uh, one centimeter equals 10 kilometers. So that, so given that, we know 0.5 centimeters equals five kilometers. Okay. So we're asked, what's the distance if it's 1.5 centimeters on the map? 10 plus five, 15 kilometers. Okay. If a pencil measures, if a used pencil if a used pencil measures 9.32 centimeters, how long is this in millimeters? And it says one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. We'll do 9.32 times 10. And that will get us 93.2 millimeters. And if you think about this one logically, um, there are more millimeters in a centimeter, so this number better be bigger than 9.32. This one's smaller. Um, this one's too big. And this one actually is bad math, so C is the only correct answer choice. Okay. Let me go ahead and clean this up. Okay, so that's for 22 to 24, use the circuit, the circle graph. Um, the circle graph breaks down the areas 
of employees in particular departments, and there are 200 employees total, okay? Which two departments employ 31% of the employees? Uh, that's simple. We just have to find two of these numbers, that is 25%, 12%, 12%, 16%, 15%, and 10 and 10%, that add up to 31%, okay? Now, I know 15 plus 16 adds up to 31, so that would be shoes and management. Um, again, 10 plus 10 will get you 20%. 10 plus 16% would get you 26%. We're looking for 31. 15 plus 16, 31, okay? How many people are employed in the housewares in housewares and stockroom? So again, this is out of 20%. What's 10% of, it's out of 200. What's 10% of 200? 200, 200 times 0.1 is 20 people. So there are 20 people here, 20 people here. These are both housewares and stockroom are both 10% and 10%. 10% of 200 is 20, so 20 plus 20 equals 40. Which department employs 50 people? So here's an easy way to do this. 50 out of 200 is equal to what percent? 50 divided by 200 equals 25%. Let's go to our chart and see which one's 25%. Women's department, so women's department, okay? 25, what is the average of the following list of test scores? So we're given one, two, three, four, five, six test scores. As soon as I see an average problem, I count up the number I'm given, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I put that in the denominator. That's what I'm gonna divide by. If there was three numbers here, I would put three here. If there was 10 numbers here, I would put 10 here. And then in the numerator, you simply take all of these and add them up, okay? And then you divide by how many there are. So add up the actual numbers, divide by how many there are, and that gives you your average. So 75 plus 84, plus 92, plus 89, plus 96, plus 80, 516. 516 divided by 86. Okay. Now, just to give you a, a, another example, since you will probably see an average question on this particular section. What's the average of one, one, and one? Okay, so there are one, two, three numbers. We're gonna add them up, one plus one plus one, which we know is gonna be three over three, which equals one, okay? So add them up on top, the number of them there are on the bottom, divide them, and that gives you your average, okay? 26, what is the selling price of a $750 stereo that is on sale for 15%? So we're gonna take the cost minus the discount, and that's gonna give us our sale price. And this will be our answer. We have to do these two things. We know the cost is 75. We know the item is discounted 15%. So we'll take 70 or 750 times 0.15. So we're going to subtract 112.5. So Ultimately, our sale price is going to be 750 minus 112.5, which is 637.5. Okay. 
are six hundred and thirty seven and fifty cents. Okay, so for this for twenty seven to twenty nine we have to look at this floor plan and do calculations based on it. Uh, the entry has to be retiled. How many square feet of tile will be needed? Okay, so here's the entry. And we want to find the area of this, that is all this space. Okay, you may notice that this looks, if you were to complete it, like a quarter of a circle, and in fact it is. So to do, and take a look, this is the radius of the circle. So we know the radius is five feet. So we need to find a quarter of the area of the circle. Area of a circle is pi r squared. We know the radius, so we can plug that in, but we want a quarter of the area. So we would just divide this formula by four. So let's go ahead and plug things in. Pi radius is five, five squared divided by four. Okay. Order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, then division. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, five squared we know is uh, 25. Now, instead of using pi, because you don't notice that it's not anywhere on this calculator, you can use 3.14 times 25. That gives you 78.5. And then you divide by four. which will give you 19.625 feet squared since you're talking about area, okay? Okay, 28. There will have to be new linoleum on the bathroom floor. Linoleum is on sale at the local Building Supply Center for 225 a square foot. What will be the cost to redo the bathroom floor? So here's the bathroom. It's a space here. It's a rectangle. It's a five by eight rectangle. Um, this is the width. This is the length. Area of a rectangle is length times width. So what we're going to do is find the area and then multiply that by 225. So five times eight, as you know, is 40. 40 times 2.25, let me move my calculator. What's that gonna be? Ninety. So to redo the bathroom floor, it is gonna be $90. If you weren't using linoleum, it'd probably be a little more. Okay, carpet is on sale. The manager will need to buy 325 square feet to re-carpet the apartment. Um, the regular price per square foot is $12.50. The sale price is $9.50. How much will the manager save by buying the carpet on sale? So basically, we have to do two calculations. We have to find the price of the carpet if it wasn't on sale and take that and subtract the price uh, of the sale price. So let's go ahead and do that. 325. And we don't have to use the diagram for this because we're given the area already. 325 times 1250. This would be regular price. So the regular price is $4,062.50. Sale price would be $950 times that. Okay. 
which is three thousand and eighty seven dollars and fifty cents subtract these two and that will give us our answer four thousand sixty two and fifty cents minus three thousand eighty seven and fifty cents savings of nine hundred and seventy five dollars okay A manager was charging $450 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. After the remodel, he will charge $525. He has six of them. How much more will he make in rent each month? Um, so basically, we have to find out how much he makes in rent already minus uh, the increase that he's going to be getting. Uh, so $525 times six. That's going to be after he does the remodel, he should be making $3,150 per month for all six apartments that he owns. $450 times six. Again, this is the cost to rent one apartment. He has six of them. Ah. Uh, I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's going to be 2700 Subtract them. So he's going to make a monthly profit increase of four hundred and fifty dollars okay so now we're going to be using this line graph which compares the sales of the sales of wash machines from aa company with harry's appliances um over the course of four months so during which month were the greatest number of dishwashers sold? So basically, they don't care which company sold the most. They want to find out in which month both companies sold the most. So you basically take both numbers and add them up. So this one's going to be here and here. It's going to be 75 plus 50, and that's going to be for the month of June. Uh, if you need to, use the calculator, 75 plus 50. So in June, both companies sold 125 dishwashers. Um, in July, again, we're using these numbers, um, 100 plus 50. In July, they both sold 150 dishwashers. In August, we use these two numbers, namely 75 and 25. Which is just a hundred, and then we use these two numbers for September. Hundred plus twenty-five. Okay, and these are the months: June, July, August, September. Which one's the greatest? Hundred and fifty is, so we know it's going to be July. During which month did Harry sell twice as many dishwashers as Triple A? Again, Harry's is the solid line, Triple A has the triangles. So we want to find twice as much. Let's let's compare these. Is 75 twice as much as 50? No, 100 would be. Is 100 twice as much as 50? It is, we're done, it's July. Okay. Is 75 twice as much as 25? No, 25 times two is 50. So we got the right one. Okay. Um, which of the following means seven N minus five equals six? And they're gonna switch it around so it's not as clear as that. Um, seven N or five less than seven times a number is six, okay? So seven times a number, seven N, five less than that is six. X squared 
plus 3 equals 12, or some number squared plus 3 equals 12. Less means subtraction. Is means, is means equal. Okay? So, let's see. 3 more than 2 times a number is 12. This is squared, not 2 times. 3 more than a number squared is 12. More is addition. Squared is squared, and is is equal. So we got this one. 12 less, 12 minus 3 times a squared number doesn't make sense. Okay. Which of, which of these is 35? Which of these is another way to write 3 times 3 times 3? Well, let, let me give you an example. 2 times 2 equals 2 squared. 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 2 to the third. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That is 2 times 2. 4 times is 2 to the fourth. Okay, so 3 times 3 times 3 is 3 to the fourth. Um, and it's pretty much, you just have to know that that's how you represent uh, scientific, or not scientific, notation exponents. What is the sum when 10,325 and 9,672 are rounded to the nearest thousand and then add? So first, you're going to round, then you're going to add. Okay, you got to follow their instructions to a T. So in particular, we're rounding to the thousand, so that's the thousand. Well, let's go ahead and pull that out and do it. So units, tens, hundreds, thousands, this is where we're rounding. Uh, we look back here, this is less than five, so we're going to round just to 10,000. If it was bigger than five, we'd round up to 11,000. 9,672, again, thousands. So we look here, it's bigger than five, we round up to 10,000. So we've gone ahead and round it. Now we're adding. So 20,000 would be the correct answer. This is a two-step equation. Okay. And there are two ways to go about doing this. Um, if you're not good with algebra, you can simply plug in all these numbers for x and see which one equals 27. Or you could actually work it out using the steps in algebra, the algebraic steps. So I'm going to plug it in first, and then we'll do the algebra. So 8 times 4 minus 5 equals 27. So there we know this one works. Let's plug in the other ones to see if they work. 8 times 5 minus 5, that's 35, does not equal 27. 6 times 8 minus 5, 43. So we know none of these work. Let's go ahead and work it out. So the, when you're doing these two-step equations, you want to get x by itself. Uh, so you always work with that which is not attached to the x. So to get this 5 to the other side, we add it to both sides. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And that leaves us with 8x equals 27 plus 5, which is 32. Can we want x by itself? So this is 8 times x. So we're going to do the opposite to get rid of it. Divide. We have to do that to both sides. 8 divided by 8 is 1. We're left with x equals 32 divided by 8, which is 4. Okay, and pretty much that's it. Same thing. The only thing they did is change a sign and a variable. Um, you can either plug these all in for m and see which one equals 46, or you can work them out algebraically. Uh, 8 times 3 plus 6, that's 30, not 46. So we have 30 equals 46. That's not a true statement, so we know that m 
does not equal 3. 8 times 4, 32 plus 6, that equals 38, so that's not 46. So we know that m does not equal 4. 5 times 8, 40, plus 6, 46. So we know that's our correct answer, because 46 does equal 46. Let's go ahead and work it out. On the side here, 8m plus 6 equals 46. Again, this is a two-step equation. We want to get m equal to something. So we're going to do the opposite of plus 6. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6 becomes 0. We're left with 8m equals 42 minus 46, which is simply... 36, 8 times m, we got to do the opposite and divide both sides by 8 to get rid of it. This goes away. m equals 36 divided by 8 if you need to. 36 divided by 8. Oops, I've made a mistake somewhere. This is 46 here. Sorry about that. So this becomes 40, and this becomes 5. See, even I make mistakes. Again, I transferred 46 to 42, and that's where I made my mistake. So it is 5. Sorry about that. Now, I've been plugging these in for a reason. This one says, which value of n will make this number sentence true? Uh, so you basically take these numbers, plug them in for n, and see if this is true. So 4 times 0 minus 3 less than 1. 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 is, oops, is negative 3. Is negative 3 less than 1? It is. Nonetheless, let's plug in one more to see if we are confident that we got it right. 4 times 1 minus 3 less than 1. 4 times 1 is 4 minus 3. Again, we're just going to drag that down. 1 is less than 1. No, 1 has to be less than or equal to 1. So we know this one didn't work. 0 is the correct answer. What's another way to write the fraction? Again, this is where your long division skills come into play. Um, let me do this one off to the side. You're given this question. What's another way to write this fraction? Well, we're going to turn it into a mixed number. And we're going to do that using long division. This basically says 29 divided by 7. So we need to find a number by which we can multiply 7. That gets us close to 20. 29, 4 times 7 is 28, subtract it, that's 1, so we have 4 with the, we have a remainder of 1, so 4, and we take this remainder, we put it over this, remainder 1 7th, so 4 and 1 7th. Remember earlier I showed you how to convert fractions to decimals? Now that's going to benefit you. 15 divided by 25, 0.6. This one asks you to convert this fraction to decimal. Just divide it using your calculator. Okay. Uh, the perimeter of a hexagon shaped garden is 125 feet. Three sides, three of the sides add up to 74. The other three sides are equal length. What is the length of the three remaining sides? So hexagon looks something like this. It's not going to be perfect, so don't complain. We know the perimeter is equal to 125. And we know, uh, and the perimeter is the adding up every single side. So you add this side, this side, this side, this side, this side, this side. So the sum of all these sides is 125. The sum of three sides is 
74. What's the length of the other three sides that are equal? Um, 125 minus 74, because that's the length of three of the sides. It's 51. And since these sides are equal, we divide them by 3. Gives you 17. Okay. Um, you will see a problem like this where you're given ingredients and asked to make calculations based on the ingredients. Um, so before we get into those, I'm going to create some workspace. Okay. So it's it says um, this is a list of ingredients needed to make 12 cupcakes. It's going to be very key. Key information. Study the list and then do questions 43 to 46. How much salt and baking powder together is needed to make 36 cupcakes. Well, 36 is how many times greater than 12? Three times. So we're going to take salt and baking powder, multiply them by three, and then add them because we're making three times as many cu cupcakes as this recipe calls for. So uh, to make 12, it takes uh, a quarter tablespoon of baking powder, and it takes uh, half a tablespoon of salt. Okay, multiply it by three, and then add. So we're going to multiply this by three over one. Multiply this by three over one. Multiply straight across. Three times one is three. 4 times 1 is 4, 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, you might be saying, well, um, am I done? Well, now you have to add these fractions, but before you can do that, you have to get the bases to be the same or the denominators to be the same. 3 over 4 is going to be fine because we want to find a number into which both 4 and 2 go, and both 4 and 2 go into 4, so we'll leave this one the same. Now we're going to convert 3 over 2 to a number over 4, and that's not good. Um, 2 times what number will give you 4? 2 times 2, so you do that to the top here. 3 times 2 will give you 6. Add 3 plus 6. Now you just add, but you keep the base the same. 3 plus 6 is 9 over 4. Um, 9 divided by 4 is 2 and 1 quarter. So we know it's this one. How many cups of flour are needed to make 6 cupcakes? Again, the recipe calls for 12. 6 is half of 12. So we're going to take whatever we have and multiply it by half. So how many cups of flour are need to make are needed to make six cupcakes? So we're looking for flour. We got two and a half um, cups of flour, and I'm going to represent that as a fraction. I'm going to multiply it by one half, and that should give you my answer. So this is uh, one and a quarter. Again, it's a good idea to be familiar, familiar with this. 0.25 equals one quarter. 0.33333 equals one third. 0.5 equals one half. 0.666 equals two thirds and 0.75 equals 
three quarters. That way you can go straight from 0.25 to one quarter. You don't have to deal with the fractions. Okay. How much butter and milk together is needed to make double batch of cupcakes? So it says you're going to be doubling it times by two milk and butter. So milk is right here times that by two. One cup times two is equal to two cups. Milk and butter. Butter is one half. One half times two is just going to give you one. So one plus two is going to be three. How much sugar is needed to make three cupcakes? Well, three divided by 12 is a quarter. So we're going to take this amount and multiply it by a quarter. So sugar is two cups, two times 0.25 equals a half. 0.5 is a half. So just a half a cup. And you got to be good going from decimals to fractions because that will help you be successful here. I could do this all in fractions or all in decimals. You have to be comfortable going back and forth because if you get some weird decimals, you know that you've probably made a mistake. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. We're basically using this chart, which shows the distances and times to get from city to city to answer these questions. Uh, what is the distance from Silver City to Greenville through Red Rock? So here's Silver, Silver City. We're going through Red Rock to get to Greenville. So we just simply uh, add up the distances. 69 to get from here to here. 57 to get to here to here. So 59 plus, oops, misspoke. 69 plus 57, that gets you 126 miles. Okay, what is the estimated driving time when traveling from Brown City, right here, to Blue Ridge through Greenville? So we're going through Greenville to Blue Ridge. This is an hour and 23 minutes. This is, uh, what is it? Let me back out. 50 minutes, so 50 minutes. And this is an hour and 23 minutes to go from here to here. So you add those times up. Um, I like to keep things in minutes and then convert to hours and minutes at the end. So there are 60 minutes and an hour. So to convert an hour and 23, I take 60 since this is one hour plus 23. It gives me 83 minutes plus 50 minutes. So that's 80, 83 plus 50. That's a total of 133 minutes to travel. Um, you can see that our answer choices are in hours and minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes. Two hours is 120 minutes, and three hours is 180 minutes. You can actually see this is going to be right in between two and three hours. So take 120 minus 133, or 133 minus 120, that gives you two hours and 13 minutes. Just keeps it simple. Forty-nine to go from Orangeburg to Greenville. Is it quicker to go through Blue Ridge or Red Rock? So we're going from Orangeburg to Greenville. And we want to know if it's quicker to go this way 
are this way. So we're going to go here to here. This is 50 plus 105. So this is an hour and 55 minutes. This is 45 plus an hour and 10. So that's also an hour 55 minutes. So it takes the same. Last, the sum of the inside angles of a triangle always equals 180. What is the measure of the missing triangle? So we got 180 equals 42 plus 84 plus some number X we don't know. Let's go ahead and work this out. Again, this is all the interior angles. This is one of them. This is the second one. This is the third one we don't know which is right here, and they have to equal 180. So let's work this out. 42 plus 84. These two, when you add them, are 126. So we have 180 equals 126 plus X. To get X by itself, subtract 126 from both sides. So this goes to 0, 180 minus 126 54 okay so that's it that's the uh, applied math section of the tape if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up uh, if you want more information or you want me to do other videos please leave some feedback in the comments below but on that note i will go ahead and cut you loose Konnichiwa.